Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's TechSoup for Libraries webinar, Crowdfunding for Libraries, Technology Tips for Futuristic Fundraising. My name is Crystal and I'll be your host. Today we have two guests who will share their crowdfunding success stories. Whether you're looking to start a new tech project or trying to fundraise for a special program or new library, you'll walk away with ideas and inspiration for your campaign. Before we begin, I have just a few announcements to share. We'll be using the ReadyTalk platform for our meeting today. Please use the chat in the lower left corner to send questions and comments to the presenters. We'll be tracking your questions throughout the webinar, and we'll answer them at designated Q&A sections throughout. All of your chat comments will only come to the presenters, but if you have comments or ideas to share, we will forward them back out with the entire group. You don't need to raise your hand to ask a question. Simply type it into the chat box. Should you get disconnected during the webinar, you can reconnect using the same link in your confirmation email. Now you should be hearing the conference audio through your computer speakers, but if your audio connection is unclear, you can dial in using the phone number in your confirmation email. We've also included that in the chat. If you're having technical issues, please send us a chat message and we'll try to assist you. This webinar is being recorded and will be archived on the TechSoup website. If you're called away from the webinar, or if you have connection issues, you can watch a full recording of this webinar later. You will receive an archive email within 24 hours that will include a link to the recording, the PowerPoint slides, and any additional links or resources shared during the session. If you're tweeting this webinar, please use the hashtag TS4LIBS. We have someone from TechSoup Live tweeting this event, so please join us in the conversation there. TechSoup connects nonprofits, charities, libraries, and foundations with tech products and services, as well as information so that you can make informed decisions about technology. Now, since 1987, TechSoup has distributed over 11 million technology donations to over 200,000 nonprofit organizations, libraries, and charities in over 60 countries worldwide. Last year, in 2014, the TechSoup donation program distributed over 61,000 products to libraries for a savings of over $19 million. TechSoup offers a wide range of software, hardware, and services through their product donation program, including Cosbox, an online fundraising platform, refurbished computers, and the recently announced Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. For more information about TechSoup product donations or services, please visit TechSoup.org and click on Get Products and Services. Okay, well now we're ready to begin. If you've just joined us, uh, thanks again for attending today's TechSoup for Libraries webinar, Crowdfunding for Libraries, Technology Tips for Futuristic Fundraising. We'll be sharing tips and recommendations for successful crowdfunding campaigns and for leveraging online fundraising tools. We hope that whether you work at a library, volunteer for your library friends group, or are part of your library's foundation, you will gain a few new ideas for your crowdfunding campaign off the for getting your crowdfunding campaign off the ground. And today we're joined by two guests who've led successful crowdfunding campaigns. Mary Ann Antonellis is the director of the MN Spirit Memorial Library in the town of Shutesbury, Massachusetts. As director, she has led several successful fundraising campaigns and partnerships in the community. Laura Bartnick is head of adult services at the North Lake Public Library District located west of Chicago. During her time there, she is focused on programming, outreach, and fundraising. My name is Crystal Schimpf, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Assisting us with chat, we have uh, Becky Wiegand, and on Twitter, we have Jenny Meese, both from the TechSoup team. Just a reminder, we will be on Twitter using the at TechSoup for Libs handle and the hashtag TS for Libs. Now throughout the webinar, we'll be sharing tools, tips, and additional resources for crowdfunding. Laura will share her experience with Indiegogo in a campaign that brought the Incredible Hulk to the North Lake Public Library District. Then Mary Ann will share two examples of how they leveraged social media to help crowdfund for a new library. We will have time for questions throughout the webinar, so please send your questions in using the chat as they arise, and we'll address as many as we're able to. If you ask a question that we are not able to get to during the webinar, we will follow up later via email with a response. 
This webinar is being recorded, and all of the slides, resources, and materials will be included in the archive of this webinar, which you should receive by the end of this week. And we'd like to know a little bit about you too. So tell us, what's your experience with crowdfunding? You can choose your response by uh, ch checking the radio button and then clicking Submit. And once you've submitted, then you should see a graph showing the results of the poll so far. You can also tell us more about your experience in the chat if you'd like to. So I'll give you, each, uh, give you some time here to think about that. I can see the responses are coming in rather quickly. And it looks like we have um, definitely a, a large number of you that have either very little or no experience. And as I'm seeing that, I'm very glad to hear it because I think this webinar will give you a good introduction to crowdfunding. Now if you happen to have more experience, I hope you learn a few things as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll now in just a few seconds. Uh, so give you one last chance to enter your response in. And I'll close it now. Great. And we got exactly 100 responses. How about that? So yeah, it looks like actually this will be a perfect webinar for those of you who are just getting started with crowdfunding or only have a little bit of experience and that you'll get some great ideas today. Thanks for sharing that, your responses in the poll. All right, now uh, just to get started, I wanted to give a bit of an overview here. There are many different crowdfunding tools out there, and these are five of the more common crowdfunding tools that libraries have been using. Uh, but they're not the only tools out there. Um, each of these platforms has different uh, fees, rules, and different ways that they work. And it's worth it to take a look at each of these platforms closely before you choose one. Um, these rules and the fees may change over time, so it's best to visit each platform directly to learn more about what they have to offer. Now I've included a link to each of these in, in the archive of this webinar. And like I said, you'll receive that later this week, so you can go directly to these tools to learn more. We'll be hearing a little bit about Indiegogo and Razoo in more detail from our guest speakers later on. Um, Causebox is a tool that's actually available through the TechSoup product donation program, and you can learn more about it on the TechSoup website. Um, and if, if you have run any crowdfunding campaigns and you have a tool that you uh, particularly like and would recommend, maybe uh, you don't see it listed here, feel free to share that in the chat and we'll share that out with everybody else and we'll even include it in the um, uh, archive of the webinar as well. These are five of the more common tools. I also just wanted to start you off with some essential tips for crowdfunding. And these tips are taken from a few blog posts and one archived TechSoup webinar. And again, I'll include those links in the archive as well. Uh, but first, be sure to plan your crowdfunding campaign carefully. You want to apply the idea of SMART goals, making your campaign specific, measurable, attainable, and relevant to your library goals. Second, be sure to start with your existing network when you're sharing your crowdfunding campaign. The people who you already know support your library. Then ask them to help spread the word. This is what helps make your campaign go viral. Third, you want to use both email and social media to spread the word about your campaign. By sending your message through multiple channels, you'll reach more people depending on which uh, channel they use more often or are, are actually reading. <laughs> Fourth, be sure to tell your story. Let your supporters know why you need the, phone, the funds and what good it will do for your community. So be sure to include a compelling story. And lastly, you may want to run your campaign for a little bit longer than what you might commonly hear about so that you have time to gain momentum and support. Some sources recommend 60 to 90 days for nonprofits and libraries in crowdfunding campaigns. All right, so now we've covered some of the basics, and I want to hand things over to Laura so that we can hear about how her library brought the Incredible Hulk in thanks to a crowdfunding campaign. Laura? Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I just want to start by saying that this is my very first time um, participating in a webinar, and so I'm super excited, a little nervous, but today I'm going to tell you about the time that we dabbled in crowdfunding in order to get a life-size Incredible Hulk statue. <laughs> so, all right. So here's a screenshot of our Indiegogo page. Um, but first, let me tell you how we got here. Uh, believe it or not, this all started as a board member's idea. 
to draw attention to the library, uh, specifically our graphic novel collection. He's a huge comic book enthusiast. Um, so he came in, pitched his idea to some of us on staff. We thought it was totally bonkers crazy, but he had our attention. Um, we, we really wanted to add a tech component to the project. So we kind of got that ironed out. Um, and uh, then we brought it to our director, who thought it was also crazy, but, but liked the idea, saw something in it, and she asked us to present to the rest of our board. Um, so in a nutshell, this was our pitch. Help the North Lake Public Library get a nine-foot-tall Incredible Hulk statue, graphic novels, and a creation station featuring an iMac loaded with uh, Adobe Creative Suite, which we actually got from TechSoup, so thank you very much, um, a Syntec drawing tablet, a 3D printer, and a light box. So um, you can see on our page, all in all, we asked for 30000 um, We raised a little over 4000 on our Indiegogo page and another 1350 in-house. So 5600 total we were able to raise in one month. All right. So um, after we press submit on the Indiegogo site, uh, this particular board member who, who came up with the whole idea, um, he actually had a background in PR and marketing. And he went to work trying to get our story out there um, via you know, all sorts of social media avenues. Uh, and it worked. Uh, um, we got a lot of media coverage. It's kind of started trickling in with Geek Girl Chicago, TechCrunch, um, and various other local gaming and tech blogs. Um, then AV Club, Huffington Post, The Guardian, Tribune, Sun-Times, and then finally, Maxim and Entertainment Weekly. So by this point, we were going crazy here at the library. We were so excited. Okay, once we made it this far, other publications and blogs started picking up the story um, as far as the UK and Poland. And here we are. Our teeny little library um, in print in Entertainment Weekly right next to Bradley Cooper's lovely face. Okay. So once the media attention um, started, then that's when we noticed our donations rolling in, 10, 20, 30 bucks here and there. Um, and then LA Boxing out in Orange County, California, reached out to us. <laughs> the owner happened to have a Hulk to donate. Um, he was using it on his property, and the city decided that it was an eyesore. It was disrupting traffic. Um, so he needed to get rid of a Hulk. We were looking for a Hulk. Um, Fastmore Logistics in Elk Grove stepped in to offer free transportation for him. And they also put us in touch with Ron Jordan of Brutal Graphics, who actually needed to saw the Hulk in half to be able to get him into our building, um, put him back together, touched him up with a fresh coat of paint. A ton of patrons came forward and donated their own personal graphic novel and comic collections, which was so nice of them. All right, so like I said, the Hulk drove from California all the way out to Illinois. Fastmore did an awesome job of taking pictures, documenting his trip, sending them to us so we could put them on Facebook and Twitter and kind of try to build excitement um, throughout his journey. We kept him under wraps in our lobby for about a week um, to give us time to plan our project wrap-up party. Uh, let the community know that he was here in the building. And on the right-hand side, I have some examples of our in-house promotion. Um, we had a special limited edition library card featuring the Hulk. Uh, we made some buttons up for staff. Um, and then patrons could also donate in-house, and we would put up a green I made a pledge sign. 
so by the end of our campaign, our lobby, our circulation desk was like a sea of green. These little flyers were everywhere. All right, so we hosted our project wrap-up party. Um, this is the busiest our lobby, the fullest our lobby has ever been. Um, so our, our director was, uh, with a helper, pulled the sheet off of him. You can see everybody's cell phones are up, taking video, taking pictures. We did demos of all of our awesome equipment that we were able to purchase. Um, we put all of our graphic novels that were donated, as well as some from the collection on display. And of course, we had green snacks and drinks. Um, here's a meme that our team librarian put together. Since he came from a boxing gym, he had his boxing gloves on, and, and we just went with it. Um, and on the right-hand side, that's our director, Sharon Heiler, standing next to him, so you can get a sense of the sheer size of him. You can't miss him. All right, so since then, our Hulk has been a huge attraction. Um, here he is dressed up for Comic Palooza, and he just makes the best landmark. <laughs> Rather than telling patrons that you know the DVDs or graphic novels are located in this room off the side of the lobby, but, but not the side that the children's department is on, um, now we just say he's in the room with the Hulk, and they know exactly what we're talking about. All right, and now I'm going to ruin all of our fun and talk about the downside. So um, not enough local coverage. Um, we couldn't tell the local press what to print, but it, I will say it was a bit disappointing that we got you know, some really great national and international coverage, but our local paper just did one small article on us um, towards the end of the campaign. Um, disorganized social media plan. So after launching our Indiegogo, it was a total whirlwind. Um, we've never done a project like this, and, and we were scrambling a bit. Um, one person started off strong you know, with the social media aspect, but then kind of got burnt out. They, you know, they were doing it all. The rest of our group was kind of, you know, where do we go from here? How do we divide this? Who's going to do what? Um, so that, that aspect was difficult. Um, not having a designated point person, spokesperson. This is also something we kind of figured out mid-project. Um, only after we had a couple committee members straying from talking points and giving quotes that were um, just slightly off message from you know, what we had drafted, drafted and what we wanted um, the library's message to be. Uh, not having a plan B we didn't meet our goal. This was a big one. Um, a plan B meaning what would be priority if we couldn't purchase everything. Um, there were some people in our group who, who really saw this as a graphic novel project and wanted all the money to go to graphic novels. Um, others in the group really saw this as, you know, we need tech equipment. This is equipment that's not possible with our current library budget. Without this campaign, we wouldn't have been able to purchase any of that. So again, kind of figuring that out before you even start, um, not a bad idea. All right, certain donors trying to take over. <laughs> uh, while we were, you know, of course, very, very grateful to all of our donors, um, some of them felt like by donating, they had a greater stake in the project. And they had tons of ideas of how to make it a bigger and better project as far as you know what library staff should be doing, what we needed to be doing, um, which was good. <laughs> On the one hand, we love their enthusiasm and passion, but we kind of had to balance their expectations with the fact that this project was an addition to our jobs as librarians. So we were all still serving on the ref desk, um, collection development. All of our regular programs did not stop when we started this project. OK, now some positive things, though. Um, we raised money. So we would have been happy with 100 bucks, right? Because that's 100 bucks that we did not have before we started. Um, thankfully, we raised considerably more than that. Uh, between what we raised and donations, we met all of our goals. Um, 
every time a kid asks us to use the 3D printer or the Mac or even takes a selfie with our Hulk, I feel like it was totally worth it. Um, we got some crazy media coverage, some of the best we've ever received. Um, most libraries our size get local coverage here and there. We had national and international coverage. Um, again, we got all of our tech equipment. We were thrilled. And we got to show off our fun side. Um, hopefully change some people's perception of a public library. You know, sure, this is a place to learn, study, get your literary fiction and your tax forms, um, but it's also a place for free entertainment, a place to be creative and experiment with the latest, greatest technology, and also just play and have fun. All right, this is what we learned, um, what worked really well for us, and you know, what we kind of figured out along the way. So we went at this project by forming a committee. Um, and we pulled one person from each department. This way, you know, all the info, all the decisions kind of trickled on down and it kept every service desk informed of, you know, what we were doing, what we were up to. Um, one point person, one spokesperson, kind of already touched on that, but that is so important. Uh, comprehensive social media and marketing plan. Um, get this together early on. Who's doing what? Get your press releases drafted. Um, get your timeline mapped out. There really is no such thing as too much planning with a project like this. So here at Northlake, we were so excited. Uh, we got a little restless and maybe launched our project too soon. Um, so. I mean, it's not a bad idea to play the what if game with your committee. What if you raise half? What if you go over? All right. Get your graphic designer on board early. <laughs> um, or if you don't have a dedicated staff member, whoever it is that's really good at those posters, flyers, design work. Um, of course, we were asking for tons of print work to be rushed at the last minute for this project. Uh, and that was in addition to everything else they were doing for the library. So um, draft your message, stay on message. Again, kind of already touched on that. Uh, plan for one, uh, more than one way to donate. Um, what your procedure will be. Not everyone can or wants to donate online. That's really important to keep in mind. Um, so figuring out what's the plan when somebody walks up to the reference desk with $5 and wants to donate to whatever your campaign is. Um, who will be collecting that? What is the procedure? Um, and I'll say most importantly, you've got to have fun with it. Uh, for us, of course, it was a ton of work and stressful at times, but at the end, <laughs> um, this was about getting a life-size Hulk at our library, so it made it totally impossible to take ourselves too seriously. And that's our story. We're, we're pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, we learned enough to make our next campaign even more successful, whatever that may be. And then you know, this happened a few years ago, so by revisiting it to do this webinar, um, I'm, I'm feeling pretty pumped for our next, uh, next project. So again, thanks for having me. Great. Well, Laura, thanks for sharing your story. And what I think is most interesting is when we think of um, something like Indiegogo, we, we tend to think a lot about the technology. And one of the things I think we get out of your uh, presentation is that there's really um, a lot to think about that isn't just the technology. Um, setting up the, the page and understanding how Indiegogo works is one thing, but it's really more about understanding the way you can spread that message online. And before we get to we've got quite a few questions coming in, and I'd invite everybody to send in more questions now if you have them. Um, but one question that came in earlier was just to uh, define maybe what crowdfunding is. And I think we're starting to get a sense of that. But one definition that we have for it is that crowdfunding really is the, the, the practice of, of funding a project by raising many small amounts of money from a larger number of people, and that um, the Internet is often involved. And we have a lot of tools like we shared earlier, um, Indiegogo being one of them, that um, might help us uh, fundraise via the Internet. Um, but it really is kind of bringing many people together. And in this case, 
I think you found that people were also um, interested in donating in-kind goods, um, which isn't something you can really account for in terms of that dollar amount. Um, now, in terms of what your goal was, I know you talked about some of the lessons you learned, um, but Veronica asked um, that it looked like the goal you know, was pretty high. It was 30000 um, but only 5600 was raised um, in terms of the dollar amount. Uh, that's, I, don't, I think, not accounting for the in-kind donation. So would you say that the initial goal set was too high, or do you feel okay having set a very high goal like that as you look back at the project? So yeah, it was really high. We kind of plucked that number out of the sky, um, not really knowing if that was realistic or not. Um, and like you mentioned, we were not expecting any of these in-kind donations. So that higher amount did a cost for the fact that we anticipated having to purchase everything. Plus that amount was to supplement our graphic novel budget um, for the upcoming year. So yeah. All right. So yeah, it's a little bit of um, success and, and also recognizing what you might do differently next time. But now to counter that question, Ryan asks, do you think that if you had not said that you wanted a Hulk, and I assume he means the statue here, that um, if you hadn't uh, indicated that, do you think you would have received as much national attention? No. <laughs> yeah. so I'm glad somebody asked about that. Um, because around the same time, we were actually in desperate need of brand new computers. We were still using old XP machines, um, no longer supported. And we did receive some criticism of, you know, why are you doing this outlandish kind of silly campaign when your library has a real need for computers? Um, and yeah, you hit the nail on the head. By saying a library needs computers, that's not going to grab anybody's attention. That's not a story that's, um, you know, while it's a worthy story, it's not an exciting story. Um, so yeah, that's why, you know, like I said, when this board member pitched it to us, we thought he was joking, and then we're like, well, wait a minute, that's actually, it's so crazy that it just might work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you need kind of like an element of strange with crowdfunding to be successful. And, and when you look at other projects, you'll kind of see that here and there. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, one person also asked, um, and, and maybe this is another uh, possible outcome of a campaign like this, um, did you see any, um, any change in your circulation stats? as a result or possibly as a result of the campaign? Or were there any other positive benefits um, in the library that you didn't already mention? Um, so I'm not sure about CERC stats. I would have to go back and peek at that. But you know, the, the positive thing is you saw the slide that was just our lobby jam-packed full of people. I would say a good majority of those people had never been in the library before. Um, so, and even our donors kind of, once they heard about the story, came in and, you know, didn't even realize that this is something a library would be interested in. You know, what is a 3D printer in the first place? Um, so, yeah, I think it, it got a lot of patrons and a lot of, you know, community stakeholders involved that they just had kind of no idea what we were all about here at the library. Great. Great. Well, we have a lot of questions coming in, and I just want to assure everybody who's sending in questions, if we don't get to all of them during the webinar today, we will follow up with an email. Um, and and so I, I want I do we do have time for maybe one or two more though, and this is a really good question. Um, thinking about the incentives that come with the Indiegogo campaign, you talked about that a little bit. Um, how did you plan for, or did you budget for those incentives? And um, did the cost of the incentives end up coming out of the funds that you raised in any way, or did you use other money to pay for those incentives? Or were they donated? Yeah, so a lot of our incentives were donated, um, either by individuals or by companies. Um, very, very few things kind of came out of the budget, because again, we wanted to really minimize that so you know all the money could go towards graphic novels and equipment and the Hulk. Great. And maybe just one last question. Um, 
And so, you know, thinking about this method of fundraising again, using crowdfunding and specifically using Indiegogo, um, did anybody um, have any questions or was there any debate over why you chose this method and why you chose Indiegogo and perhaps also the, the fees that are associated with it as opposed to maybe just asking people to drop um, a few dollars into a bin at the library. Um, you know, did you have discussion over that? What was it like and, and how did you ultimately come out with Indiegogo in the end? Sure. So we actually – this started off as a Kickstarter campaign. Um, it, we had never heard of Indiegogo when we decided to start this. Um, the thing with Kickstarter though is if you do not reach your goal, you don't, keep, you don't get to keep the money. Um, so we, if we would have gone with Kickstarter, you know, we did not reach 30000 we would have got nothing. Um, Indiegogo is much more friendly when it, when it comes to that. You can do a flexible um, campaign where you keep whatever you, you raise, whether you hit your goal or not or go over your goal. Um, also, I, from what I remember, Indiegogo was kind of more friendly to nonprofits. Um, I think they have a, a different structure for kind of the, the percentage they take from a nonprofit organization. Great. Well, that certainly gives us a little bit more information about Indiegogo in particular. And Laura, at this point I'm going to say thank you for um, sharing the knowledge that you have so far. Um, we will get um, – if, if we happen to have time at the end of the webinar, we'll get back to some of your questions specific to Laura. But if not, we'll email you later with the responses. And thanks to all of you for sending your questions in. Um, now before I move on um, to – uh, Marianne's section, I thought it might be worthwhile um, if, if you're looking at learning more about Indiegogo, um, since you know, of course this is not a webinar just about that tool, but you might be really interested in learning more. And I want to tell you about the resources they have on their website. They call it the Indiegogo Playbook. And I'll share this link um, in the archive. And basically this is their support page. And they include tips uh, for before you launch your campaign as well as during and after your campaign. And they also have information for how to contribute to a campaign, which might be helpful for you know, if you have any more skeptical donors um, or people who are wondering what it, what it means to donate online. Um, they also have a specific guide for nonprofits. So uh, Laura, you helped me segue into this um, because they do have um, some, some information specific for nonprofits and especially how to accept tax-deductible donations. Um, in every crowdfunding site, every platform has training resources like this, which you can and should review before you actually start your campaign just to help you get started. Um, but this is just giving you an idea of what Indiegogo has available. All right, so thanks again, Laura, for sharing that. And with that we'll move on. And I'm going to turn things over to Mary Ann who will tell us about how she leveraged social media and other tools to crowdsource two different campaigns towards the building of a new library. So Mary Ann? Mary Ann, are you, are you there? Just uh, make sure to unmute your line. Hi, this is – hi, I had trouble unmuting my phone. I can hear you now. I'll let you take Great. things from here. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Crystal, for inviting me to participate in this webinar. Um, I hope the information I share will be useful. This is also my first time presenting in a webinar, so I'm um, excited and also a little bit nervous. Um, let's see, a little history. So the Spear Library is a tiny one-room antique library without running water. Shutesbury is a small town, about 1,800 people in rural Massachusetts. There are no other public services in town, no coffee shop or gas station. Beginning in 1970, the town grew rapidly from about 500 people to our current population. And we've been holding steady for about 10 years or so. Despite our tiny size, our library is busy. We circulated more than 33,000 items last year and offered more than 100 programs. We're open seven days a week. We're members of a network. And we strive to be a full-service full library despite our tiny size and our rural location. Um, about 20 years ago, we started talking about the need for a larger library in town. And in 2011, 
the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners awarded us a $2.1 million library construction grant, which was contingent, contingent on a local match of $1.4 million. In January of 2012, efforts to secure that local match through a debt excluded override failed. So we were left with five months to try and raise all of the money privately. Um, that's right. After 20 years of working towards a new library, our tiny town had five months to raise more than a million dollars or we would lose our chance. So we decided to launch a national fundraising campaign. We made a short video showing the size of our library and our hopes and dreams for a new library. We hoped our video would go viral. We were, we were determined to do all that we could. Um, the video is about two minutes. It's too long to show now, but there's a link to it on the bottom of this slide, and I'll hope you come back and watch it later. I also want to mention that while we were promoting the video, we were also planning and arranging many local fundraising events, trivia nights, dinners, concerts, ukulele jams, balloon and magic shows, and more. We did two direct mail appeals during those few months. And we were very busy, and during this time period, fundraising and pr promoting the video became my full-time job. I was at my computer by 7 a.m. most days and still at it at 11 p.m. most nights. Um, we created a Fundly account, but most, no, most donations came through our PayPal account that we already had, which was active. Um, so everyone remembers that old shampoo commercial, I told two friends, and so on. Successful crowdfunding depends heavily on successful social media use. Facebook and Twitter were our constant companions. Um, I reached out to the uh, Massachusetts library community posting the video on library listservs, and a savvy librarian from Central Mass uploaded the video to Boing Boing and Cory Doctorow shared it. That was our first big break. Thousands of people visit Boing Boing, and it turns out they are library lovers. Soon after the Boing Boing post, John Hodgman, a, natural, a national celebrity with Western Mass ties, shared the video. He said the video made him cry human tears of happiness. Other celebrities and authors followed, Will Wheaton, Paula Poundstone, Neil Gaiman, Tim Daly, and, and lots more. We searched, for, we searched for and reached out to sites that promote social causes. We told them our story and who else was talking about our story and asked them to feature us. Um, the Daily Do-Gooder uh, sends, they email out one, um, one video a day and we were featured on the Daily Do-Gooder. New Earth Daily is a, um, uh, um, a online newsletter, and then the Daily Good sends um, a story, a good story to your email inbox every day. Um, and sorry, um, and we were featured on you know just countless newsletters, blogs, websites. Um, we contacted every librarian and book-related blog we could find. Most, at least, included a link to the video. Many wrote appeals on their sites or blogs on our behalf. The press began to notice. The New Yorker's book bench called us determined and creative. We really loved that. That gave us a boost that lasted a week. We were featured in local newspapers, local radio stations, local TV news, the Huffington Post. There was a front page article in the Boston Sunday Globe. There were at least three different public radio stories, and we were interviewed for Right This Minute, a web TV station based in Phoenix. Um, we had a lot of hope for our campaign, but we had pretty low expectations. We knew trying to raise more than a million dollars in a few months was a long shot, but we had nothing to lose. We worked hard, and we learned a lot. 50,000 people viewed our video. It raised $60,000 with donations from all 50 states and more than 20 countries. But it wasn't enough. 
the deadline arrived and we lost the grant. So we still need a new library. Um, and although we don't have any immediate plans to try again, we know that a new library will cost money, so we continue to actively fundraise. Some of us call it our rake and bake fund. Um, so one thing we've been doing for three years is a spring spruce up. So we have, oh, this year we had 16 people volunteer to be on teams of four adults who go out into the community and we'll do spring cleanup in, um, in a homeowner's yard for an hour for a $100 donation to the library, and that's grown every year. Um, in December last year, we decided to participate in Valley Gives, which is um, a regional online giving day. It's hosted by the Community Foundation of Western Massachusetts. It was in its third year, and thousands of local people have been participating in Valley Gives donating million dollars, millions of dollars to local nonprofits. Uh, the Daily Gives and the Community Foundation use um, Razu as the platform for giving in Valley Gives. And the Community Foundation gave a lot of training and support for nonprofits uh, participating in Valley Gives. And they had a whole um, storytelling workshop to help nonprofits learn how to tell their story. And they actually used our video in their storytelling workshop. So that was interesting to, to go to the storytelling workshop and then have them using our video as one of their storytelling tools. We deployed all the same strategies we learned in our previous campaign, but on a local level. We gave out chocolates with little strips of paper um, telling people about our upcoming campaign. We posted it on social media. We did a town-wide mailing. We made a banner for the side of the building. We posted on local listservs and put flyers around town. We reached out to local craftspeople, artists, and authors to donate items for incentive prizes for donations at different giving levels. And we were trying to make our campaign a positive, fun, ex and successful experience. When we registered for Valley Give, we had a small goal, $500, but a local donor offered a $2,500 challenge gift, increasing our potential and our efforts. This is our, our Valley Gives web page, um, and this was part of Razu's platform. We had a slideshow um, at the top, and, um, and then we had an appeal letter below it. Um, townspeople really enjoyed seeing themselves in the slideshow. Um, let's see, so Valley Gives was December 10, 2014, and throughout the day, we were all about Valley Gives. We served snacks at the library all day. We were open all day until 8 p.m. We're usually just open five hours on a Wednesday. We used social media throughout the day to thank donors, and we were online until 11 p.m., 11.59 p.m. that night. Um, promoting Valley Gives and, and keeping the momentum going. Um, Valley Gives was a smashing success. We raised lots of goodwill, excitement, and hope, and we raised more than $9,400. Uh, we want to thank our volunteers. We couldn't have done it without them. Um, Lindsay Van Dyke was just a local, um, you know, budding filmmaker, um, and she volunteered her services. Emily Block helped with the video campaign. Susie Mosier has been um, by my side for all of these years, and we have lots of library friends and townspeople and national and international library supporters. Um, so this spring, we reached an important milestone. We um, surpassed raising $100,000 for a new library fund, and so we thought it would be a good reason to celebrate. So we had an ice, ice cream social that about 150 people enjoyed. And that's my presentation, so thank you. All right, Marianne. Well, thank you for sharing your story. And I think 
One of the messages here that, that I certainly see, and I saw this in Laura's as well, is that um, not reaching a specific goal that you've perhaps set with crowdfunding doesn't mean that you haven't succeeded in some respect. And this question came up earlier in terms of you know, setting a, a very high goal and not necessarily reaching it in, in the way that perhaps you think about that. So do you have any more words to say on that, just kind of looking back at what you've done so far and seeing these high goals that weren't met um, but seeing you still making you're still making forward progress towards your your big goal, Does that makes right right. And when we made our video all those years ago, we it, you know it took it took a while. It was a, a long a six month debate and well a five month debate about whether or not the town would fund the new library. And people had been we really had been working on it for 20 years to get to that point. And so we had we had already lost. And we had, um, and so we, we had already lost. We had nothing left to, to lose, and we wanted to. Part of the campaign, we also just wanted to change, sort of the the tone of the of the debate around a new library. So, of course, for a tiny town like ours, coming up with a million dollars, it's that that that's challenging for people because um, the economy was really bad and. People are leery of any increase in taxes. Um, so, while we didn't raise the million dollars, we did we did have a fun, you know, national conversation about libraries that that drew attention on us, and it did change the tone of the conversation here in Shrewsbury. People who were opposed to a library weren't opposed to it if if they didn't have to pay for it through tax dollars. So. So it was really a positive experience in the town. There was a lot of support for it. People who had been opposed to the project supported the, uh, the fundraising campaign, and they've been they've been supporting all of the other fundraising campaigns that we've been doing projects that we've been doing in the meantime. So they might hire a spring spruce up team or volunteer to be on a team. So we didn't we didn't get our new library, but but we haven't stopped trying to get a new library. Either, so um, so we feel pretty good about it. Great, great, and that definitely speaks to the change in the perception of the community, the awareness that you're raising about the library through the fundraising campaign um, campaigns that you've done so far. Um, now, Mary asked a question about. Um, well, she says, how has the money you've raised so far? How has that been invested? Uh, or has it been invested? Or m maybe the bigger question here is, what are you doing to set that money aside? Um, and I'm not sure if this is a question you're you're comfortable or able to answer right now, but maybe you could speak to that at least in general terms of what you do when you're you're reaching this larger goal and you've got this money that has been raised so far. Right. Um, it's it's in the bank. It's in a CD. We're a little leery of um, of putting it in any kind of risky. Investment. Um, so we've we've sort of talked it around a couple of times. We've met with um, with the banker, and so far our friends of the, the friends of the library are holding the money, and so far they're leery of doing anything risky with the money. So it's it's in a it's in CDs in the bank, um, and that's right. likely where it'll stay. Great, great. Well, that speaks to yeah, it's set aside somewhere um, right. in safekeeping, if you will. Right, so. in, in, a, in, a, in an account dedicated toward a future yeah. new library fund. It's not in with the Friends General Fund. Great, great. And then actually, so this uh, leads me to the next question is maybe you could speak to the way, it, is the fundraising going through the Friends of the Library group in, in your situation, or is the library running it directly? And are there any limitations based on that um, in, in terms of how much funding you can receive um, from people in your community? So the, so the Friends of the Library are the fundraising arm of the library, and any donations um, that come in are donations to the Friends of the Library for this project. Um, and because this is such a tiny town and a tiny library, I work closely with our Friends of the Library group. I don't ask any volunteers to do anything that I'm not willing to sort of stand right up and do myself. So, so yeah. I work with them and, um, and you know, if there's a bake sale, I bake and I take my shift at the bake sale table. And I'm one of the Spring Spruce Up crew members. And um, 
and it's so but but the money is raised by and held by the friends of the library great great and actually speaking of the amount of effort that goes into these fundraising campaigns, we also got a question about um, you know, perhaps the cost to benefit ratio. And while we may not have that math on hand, can you speak to how uh, much perhaps time and, and even expense goes into these campaigns um, versus the amount of m money of funding that you are generating? And, and I guess the question here is, is it, is it worth it in the end? <laughs> are you getting a return on the effort right. you put in? So Valley Gifts didn't cost us anything. The video campaign didn't cost us anything. Um, we had so our the videographer was a volunteer, um, and um, and so she she made the video for free. Everyone that was in the video was a volunteer. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to put a video on YouTube. It doesn't cost anything to use um, social media. Um, you can log into Facebook and do a post in four minutes and then go about your day and, and hope that people are taking your post and sharing it. The same thing with, with Twitter. It didn't cost anything to participate in Valley Gives Day. And, that, and the, the Community Foundation, and these, these online giving days are happening um, regionally across the country. Um, and um, we did, we you know, we did pay a small fee to Fundly. That was a percentage of the donations. We did. There is a percentage of the donations that go through PayPal, that go. Um, but having those online giving platforms makes it well worth it. And, and then Razu, which the Community Foundation used for Valley Gives Day, also takes a, a small percentage of the donations. But that especially the Valley Gives Day, we just look at that as that was beyond our wildest dreams because we don't have an actual plan for a new library and we don't have even a time frame of of when we're going to be trying again. But to raise, you know, nearly ten thousand dollars in one day. Um and you know, i I I bought a bag of Hershey's kisses and we printed up some postcards. It wasn't there wasn't much expense that went into that. Um, my time, um, but but I I enjoy doing this kind of work, and I get um, and I like to have projects to do to keep me busy, so and out of trouble. Great, great. Well, that certainly gives us a good idea of maybe what you've put into it so far. And I think um, you know maybe now I just maybe move into wrapping things up a little bit. And Marianne, is there, what's your future look like at this point? Do you think you'll do some more crowdfunding in the next year or so? And what might that look like? I, I do think we will. Um, so the Community Foundation is skipping 2015 for Valley Gives, and they've, they're doing an evaluation of the whole program in ways to make it work even better for nonprofits. So they're planning to have a Valley Gives Day in the spring of 2016. Um, and we're planning to participate in that. In the meantime, we'll continue with uh, dinners and concerts and spring spruce ups and um, local tag sales and bake sales and book sales, and um, and those will all help benefit our new library fund. Um, and but we're looking forward to Valley Gives in the spring of 2016. Um, so again, participating with in that local online giving day. Um, which our which our supporters are already expecting and looking forward to, and looking forward to helping us make it a successful event once again. Great, great. And Marianne, um, uh, before we go back to Laura for one last question, I just want to ask you: Do you have any advice um, or uh, uh, kind of closing words to share? With uh, people, you know, we, we saw that there were a lot of people starting uh, crowdfunding for the first time, didn't have a lot of experience with it. So, what would you recommend to somebody who's getting ready to start on this path right. um, and try some crowdfunding? Okay, I think um, what I would recommend is that crowdfunding starts with a crowd. Um, you want to have a group of people like Laura's board, who were and and their that group of staff people. And with us, it's people who are passionate about providing a new library for Shootsbury, so that Friends of the Library core group and the, the people who had been involved in the designing and planning phase before. So you start with a crowd and you generate some excitement around your project before you even launch your online campaign. I don't think you can um, 
I think just starting with an online campaign without some buzz beforehand is probably harder. We, our, our new library project had a lot of attention before we, um, before we started crowdfunding. And because of that attention and the fact that we keep working at it, and we keep having events, and we keep talking about it, and we, you know, so we have these highly visible events um, in town. You know, we'll serve a turkey dinner to 150 people, or um, or have a balloon show, or have a giant book sale that takes up half of our town common. Um, so we do all of those things to keep our our local crowd engaged and having fun, so that when we're launching a crowdfunding campaign, there's a, a crowd ready to go and spread it through social media and the Internet um, to bring in, to, to attract that attention. Great. Excellent advice for cultivating that crowd for your crowdfunding effort. So Marianne, thank you for sharing, um, sharing your expertise and experience with us. Um, Laura, are you still uh, there on the line? Yes, I'm here. Great. So Laura, I also just wanted to ask you then for any last, uh, again, words of advice for other libraries um, who might be embarking on a crowdfunding campaign. Based on your experience, what would you tell them? Yeah, well just like Marianne said, other than um, staff time, uh, again, this campaign hardly costs us anything. Um, so really, I mean, there's, there's very low risk. Um, it's a lot of fun. You learn a lot. Um, if you kind of just peek around, like in the last couple of years, I think more and more libraries are doing this. Um, as you kind of tap into your community and and ask them for donations and things like that, um, it, it's nice to be able to to go beyond your immediate community and and get people to help you out who support just libraries in general or whatever your mission is. Um, to get support nation and, and worldwide. All right. Great. Well, um, thank you both. Thank you, Laura and Marianne, for sharing um, your stories and also your advice with us today. Um, and for those of you who had questions that we weren't able to answer, we'll be following up with email within the next week or so, and we'll get back to you um, with some of your very specific questions or some of those questions that came in kind of at the last minute there. So thank you for asking them. And if, if you still have any questions, you can still put them in the chat for the next few minutes. Um, before we sign off, I have a few resources I'd like to share that may help you um, as you continue on this uh, goal to start some crowdfunding campaigns in your community. Um, I do ask that if you would stay online, we'll have a brief survey at the very end as well where you get to tell, tell us what you thought of today's webinar. But if you're still interested in learning more about this topic, I recommend these resources um, that are available on the TechSoup website and the links will be in the archive. Um, the first two are uh, some additional webinars that are archived from some crowdfunding experts. Um, and the last is a forum post that outlines the differences between several crowdfunding tools that we mentioned today. So I do recommend taking a look at those to learn more. Also, if this is your first time attending a TechSoup for Libraries webinar, or even if it isn't, uh, then I hope you'll visit us online to learn more about what we have to offer. TechSoup for Libraries addresses the specific needs of public libraries, and TechSoup for Libraries gathers stories um, about how libraries are utilizing technology, and we share them via webinars, blog posts, and our monthly newsletter. Learn more at TechSoupForLibraries.org. We also have three upcoming TechSoup webinars that may interest you. Uh, tomorrow we have a webinar with uh, Microsoft OneNote, uh, which is a digital note-taking app. Uh, if you're interested in uh, the social media aspect of things, then you may want to learn how to accomplish more uh, at our webinar on Thursday, August 6th. And our next library-specific webinar will be on Wednesday, August 19th, focusing on technology planning for small libraries. Um, you can register for these webinars and view archives of past webinars at TechSoup.org. Uh, just a reminder that we will put the links in the archive, and you'll also have access to the slides. And you'll get that by the end of this week, so you'll be able to access all of the links that we've shared today. Thank you for joining us. And uh, like I said, please stay on the line for just a moment longer and take a survey about today's webinar. Uh, thanks again to our guests for sharing sharing their crowdfunding experiences. I'd also like to thank ReadyTalk for being our webinar sponsor. ReadyTalk can help you collaborate and share information and is available as a product donation on TechSoup.org. Have a great afternoon everyone. Bye-bye.